May God bless you and welcome to our weekly message. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for everything you've done for us. We ask you, Lord, for a message that would touch every soul that hears it. We pray it will be your words and no one else's and that it would go forth for your glory. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let us go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Verse 49. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. This giant man of war, Goliath, their champion, he's got his big sword and he's ready to do what he's ready to do. Laughing at this little boy that's come to fight him. David, who won't even take Saul's armor. He puts it off him. Goes and gets him five smooth stones from the brook. And he's got his sling. And he goes up against this Philistine. Declaring what he's about to do. Declaring that, hey, my God is able. My God is the one that's going to deliver you and your army into our hands today. Because my God rules my God he says and with that faith this little warrior that doesn't even look like a serious entry into the fight proves victorious and this giant champion is laying there love this verse and David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead but the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth this man in verse 43 and the Philistine said unto David am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves and the Philistine cursed David by his gods and the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. You know, he's talking stuff. Then said David to the Philistine in verse 45, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. All this stuff you come at me with, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And God will establish this man as a king. And his line will never fade away. As Jesus will be born and David's name will still be used so often. Because God, the God of heaven, the God that you and I serve, is a God that's able. A God that's faithful. He can deliver. He can move in ways that we have no idea how he's going to do it. He takes this little boy with these five smooth stones and a sling. And this big Philistine falls. So often in the word of God, he moves and he does the impossible. He makes the impossible possible because he is who he is. That all the earth may know that he is God. That you and I may know that he is God. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, as we look at the Pharisees and we look at Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, born of a virgin, perfect in all His ways, the perfect, spotless, blameless, sacrificial Lamb, the Messiah walking among them, and these Pharisees who have already defined God in their own minds, have already put limitations 
on who our God is, what our God is able to do, how exactly our God will come and all that. These Pharisees stand right in front of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Just like this Philistine stands right in front of David thinking that he's already got the battle figured out. He's already got everything taken care of. He's going to wipe this little boy out. That's going to be the end of it. His army wins. These Pharisees look at Jesus. They think this guy, he's not the Messiah. But I tell you, lean not to your own understanding. Because you see, Goliath is sorely mistaken. You see Goliath lay it on his face. Loses that head just like David says he's going to take his head from him. He takes his head from him. These Pharisees that questioned Jesus and tried to trip him up in whatever way. They were deceiving themselves as they could have spent time with the master. They could have got to know him right there in front of them, right there before them. You and I today, let us not define God in such a way that we limit God. That we tell ourselves, our God is not able to do this. God will just go this far, but he won't do this and he won't do that. The only thing that I read that my God won't do is lie. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not going to lie. Word tells us he won't lie. Something else he won't do. He won't fail his children. He won't fail those that trust in him. He is God. And I tell you, you see the faith of this child, David. For he was still a child by all intents and purposes. And you pray with a child sometime. You talk to a kid about God. And a child's mind doesn't limit God. It doesn't limit him in any way, shape, or form because a child's imagination is vast and they've not been corrupted by this world and not been poisoned by all the do's and don'ts and the laws of this and the laws of that that man teaches and all the limitations that man tries to put on everything. A child's still got an open mind, wide open. And their little faith in God is the most precious thing you and I, it's time for us to return to childhood in that way. That's what we're going to call our message today, return to childhood. Let us return to that childlike faith. Like David, he stands there and he says, this is what's going to happen. This is how it's going to go down. I'm going to take that head from you. My God is able. And today... You'll be delivered into our hands, into my army's hands, by my God. Not because of who I am, not because I'm some great warrior yet. I'm a child still with five smooth stones and a sling. But you're going down because of who he is. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So greater is he in me than you, you giant Philistine champion, great man of war who's slain untold numbers, I'm sure. And he goes down. Today there's situations in your life, there's situations in my life, there's things going on that they seem to be insurmountable. They seem to be no way around any of them. You don't know exactly how in the world that whatever mountain that is, is going to move. You don't know how in the world that, that whatever situation, whatever drama that's going on, you have no idea how that's going to be fixed. But I tell you, let us return to childhood and just know that our Father in Heaven is able. You know, a child, when mom or dad tells a child something, Unless mom or dad have broken their word untold number of times. But if mom and dad are good about keeping their word to the child, then the child doesn't worry about how much it costs. Believe me, my kids don't worry about what stuff costs. They're quick to bring it to you, whether or not you're going to do it or not or be able to do it. 
They don't care. They just know that they want to do it or whatever. And they'll bring it to you, bring it to your attention that it's possible for them to do with such an amount of money or whatever. And the child's mind, they don't worry about all these concerns that you and I worry about. They just know mom and dad have some money. Mom and dad normally take care of whatever it is. Or if they're sick, they know mom and dad might know what it is that can help them. Mom and dad will be able to pick them up after school. Mom and dad will be able to take them here. Mom and dad can do all these things. That's the faith of a child. And they don't, don't doubt it. They don't dispute it. They don't worry about it. They just know that they know that that's how it is. Mom and dad will have supper on the table. They don't know mom and dad only have $3 or whatever. And they don't know how in the world they're going to buy some more stuff for tomorrow or whatever. They didn't even know how they'd get gas for that day. They don't realize all these things. They just know mom and dad will make a way. You and I, let us get back to that childlike faith. That we just know that we know that if we talk to him, we know that we know if we ask Him about it, if we've given it over to Him, that even though our mind can't see how exactly He's going to do it, even though we don't know how in the world it might come to pass, that if we've given it to Him, if we've put it in His able hands, that it can come to pass. Our God is able. I feel led to preach it so much here lately because He is, and I think people truly need to hear that He's able, that He can. Let us not limit Him. Let us not define Him and put Him in some kind of box. For one thing, He's God. He's not going to fit in anybody's box. He's not going to fit in anybody's just one little definition of who He is. All the names of God. All the things God has done in His Word. And just as with Jesus it said, there wouldn't be enough books in the world to write all the things He'd done. That's the Lord that we serve. That's the God that's over us. Let's return to that childhood and be like those little children that Jesus said were so precious to Him. He said he didn't want those little children offended. It'd be better for somebody to have a millstone tied around their neck and they cast into the sea than to offend one of his little ones. Brothers and sisters, let's be his little ones. Let's be his little ones and trust in him. Like we've never trusted in him before. We're going to see a world continue to go in this spiral that it's going in, this downward spiral, this mess, and all the confusion, all the pain, all the things that are happening. I truly don't see it getting any better in those ways and in the days that we're in and all that. I truly believe perilous times are here and all that's going on. But what I do believe is that no matter how bad it gets, God gets just a little bit sweeter every day to those that trust in Him, those that fear Him, those that know they know that He's there, and those that depend on Him. And if we'll have faith in Him, if we'll trust in Him, if we'll follow after Him, then just like this little shepherd boy, we've got nothing to worry about, even in the face of this giant even in the face of whatever mountain, whatever obstacle, whatever thing comes at you, whatever awful boss or awful situation or awful family member or whatever it might be, that we, because our Father is our Father, because our Father is able to bless us and to, to build us up and to make us what we need to be to go against whatever it is, because He is who He is, we can get where we need to get. Not because of us. You know, we are just us. We're just flesh and blood in and of our own flesh. None of us are anything spectacular. You know, let us not be prideful and puffed up and, and think anything like that, but let us have confidence instead in our God and what He is able to do in us. That He has blessed us to be able to do whatever it is, whatever we have, whatever we know, whatever we can do, whatever we can grow, whatever seeds we can sow, whatever, is all because Him. 
All because He allowed it. Every good and perfect gift comes from Him. And even those things that we might go through, you know, the cancers and the illnesses and the, the financial woes and family problems and all the things that go on, being mistreated, ridiculed, falsely accused, falsely imprisoned, all the things that so surely go on in so many lives. We serve a God. And you see right here in His Word, you see Joseph falsely accused, imprisoned under false means and all those things. You see Joseph go through every bit of that. And he comes out better on the other side, betrayed by his brothers, sold out by them. He comes out better on the other side. We see Christ. You know, nobody ever did anybody as bad as Jesus Christ got done because the love and the pureness of his heart and everything else Judas kisses him on the cheek and sells him out. 30 pieces of silver. Send our Lord to the cross. And our Lord is up there. Beaten and battered and crucified. Betrayed. But then, but then he rises again. He overcomes sin. He overcomes death. He overcomes all those things. And he makes a way. Everybody that will follow him. I tell you, don't get no better than that. So no matter what you or I go through, and I know there's so many people going through so many things, no matter what we face, no matter what we encounter, even those awful things, our God is able to use those awful things to make some beautiful things. To lead us closer to Him. And whatever it is that we've got to face or go through, if it gets you or me to heaven, or somebody else that's watching it, if it gets somebody to heaven, if it wins a soul to Christ, it was all worth it. Joseph in prison. How many people have read that story and found strength? How many people sitting in a prison under false means, have read that, found strength, found courage, found hope that God would do that in their lives as well, just like he did for Joseph. How many lives has God touched? There's no telling. It's like the sand of the sea and the stars in the, in the heavens and all that, the lives that God has touched, the souls that God has moved this way and that and pulled to him. All the things that God has done. Let's be like children. And just trust Him. That no matter what we're in. No matter where we are. No matter how it is. That our God is able. The Lord will permit me. I want to testify just a little bit. About what God did for me. Six year old boy. Crossing the street to get an ice cream. My mom worked on one side of the street, a little gas station over here, and some orange cream sickles. I go across the street, buy my little ice cream, I'm coming back. This car just comes out of nowhere and hits me. Breaks my arm, messes me up a little bit. I'm laying there, looking up. From me laying there, hit by that car, they find a kidney problem that in another year would have killed me. My God! Saves my life. September 20th. I love the month of September because the month of September has always been special. That was the month that God chose to spare me for whatever reason and I thank Him. Though I didn't always deal rightly with Him after that, it took me a lot of years, but my God saved me. Saved my little life. So many other people, He saved them. And yet it was an awful experience to go through that. But it was just so God could show another problem and it could get taken care of. September 21st, some years later, my father passed away. 55 years old, he dies of a heart attack. It was an awful thing. I was 24 years old. God uses that to bring me down to a bottom. Depression and all that sets in. 
And then I turn my life back over to Him. I realize that I'm called to preach His Word. And about 25, I surrender to God. And begin to go forth for Him. Our God can use the worst of the worst situations to bring the best <coughs> outcomes. Though they're painful, though they're difficult, and these are just a couple situations in my life, but they mean the world to me. Because one of them, God sees fit to spare my little life. I always knew from that time that he saved me for some reason, and praise God. There's so many preachers out there that something like that has happened in their life, and God has spared them. I think to show us. Even the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul knew how lost he was when he became found. When he was, <coughs> excuse me, when he was on that road to Damascus. And he saw the light. You know, and Jesus spoke to him. The Apostle Paul knew that he was on the wrong road. And God saved his life that day. Because he would have continued down that same road. Righteously persecuting the church of God, even though he was in the wrong 100%. God turns him around and he's forever humble, he's forever grateful. I think so many people that they know God has done that in their life. And if you've been spared for some, from something, if there was something that happened in your life, and you think, I don't know how in the world I had that wreck and there was just a little scratch on me and that was it, for I should have been killed. I don't know how in the world they found that spot and were able to remove it and I didn't die. I don't know why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why you were spared from whatever it might have been. Why that last overdose didn't kill you if you overdosed or something like that. Why that long night of binge drinking. Why they turned you over at just the right time before you choked on your own vomit or whatever might have happened. Why God spared you. I'll tell you why he spared you. To give you another opportunity to call out to him. To give you another opportunity to follow him. And what a blessing it is to have that other opportunity to come to him. You might say, preacher, I don't know why in the world I'm still here. I do. I do. It's for his glory. It's so you can call on him before it's too late. Let us call on Him. No matter what's happened to you, no matter what life has thrown your way, it can all be for the glory of God if you'll allow it to be in your life, if you'll allow Him to come into your life, if you'll allow Him to show you, allow Him to direct your steps, allow Him to have His perfect will. For He can take the awfulest of things and get the glory out of them. Make them precious things to you, even though they might have been hard things. You know, I'd give anything to have my dad back, but at the same time, knowing that that experience, going through that, helped lead me back to Christ. What a beautiful thing that God did with such an ugly, awful thing. I've seen family members. Had an uncle who died of cancer. One of the nicest guys you'd ever meet. But just as we preached the other day, no matter how good you are, that doesn't get you into heaven. It's Christ. And he gets cancer. And he receives Christ. He asks Christ into his heart. Up in his 60s, I think, when he did it. But he does it. And this man that was a good old boy all his life, I'm sure, because he seemed like one of the sweetest Man, you'll ever meet good hearted and all that. But he gets the one essential element that gets him into heaven. Jesus Christ. My Aunt Diane, the same type of thing. She had lived a life, lived kind of a wild life at times and different ways and all that. But, but she gets cancer. The last time I was with her, she's praying for healing at a church. But God didn't choose to heal her body. But I truly believe he healed her soul for he changed her. And God takes this soul that was on a road perhaps to the wrong place. And he turns his soul to him. 
And these souls returned to childhood, trusted in Him. You know, when we come to the cross, when we come to Jesus, we return to childhood and we say, I trust you, Lord, with my soul. I don't know what I can do. When we hit that, that end of our rope and we come to Christ, we say, I don't know what I can do. But I know my Father. He knows. I'm going to give my life to Him. I'm going to give this to Him because He can take care of it. He can fix it. No matter what's going on with you today, give it to Him. And if you've not given your life to Him today, or if you're rebellious like I was at 24, 25, and hadn't gave my life back to Him yet, I was living sinful and doing all manner of things, knowing that He'd saved my life. And you may know also, preacher, He's, he's saved my life too. He's, he's done so many things for me all through. And I've dealt with Him like this. Well, I tell you, just as David, all he had was that, that bag with those five smooth stones. He used just what he had, and God did the rest. Just as you and I are walking around just like we are, just come to God today just as you are. Whatever's going on in your life, whatever kind of mess and drama and addictions or whatever else, <clears throat> come to Him just as you are. Because you're you. He is God. He's able to meet you. Draw nigh to Him and He'll draw nigh to you. Meet Him. And let Him take you. Let the Father have your life. Let that precious blood of Jesus take advantage of that sacrifice on your behalf, on my behalf, that He would die for us. And give your life over. to him for the first time or recommit your life either way put your life back in his mighty hand return to childhood be a child of God let the father worry about all those things you've been worrying about let the father carry all those things you've been trying to carry let the father have your concerns cast your cares upon him Jesus said come unto me all ye that are heavy laden give you rest what an easy easy rest it is when all your worries and all your cares are in the hands of one that can do something about it like if you've been stranded all night out in the cold broke down on the highway and all of a sudden here comes a friend whoever's coming to get you nice warm car Newer car runs good. You know you're not going to have any problems going back home. And you get in that car. And even though you've got all that stuff that you've had to worry about. You know that you're going to be alright. You're going home. Well this life is hard. This world is hard. There's so many things that we all go through. But one thing we can rest assured of. If we'll give our life to Jesus. Is that we're going home. If we'll follow after him, if we'll return to childhood and be his children and let him be our God and go with him. And we're going home, just like sitting in that warm car knowing that I'll be home in a little bit. I'll be in my good warm bed. I'll be in, in comfort. And no matter what kind of illness or mess that you're going through or have gone through, just like my aunt and uncle that, that passed away from cancer and so much pain I know at the end. But I believe when they open their eyes, they open their eyes in heaven. They open their eyes in a place that, that all this stuff, I reckon that the suffering of this present world can't compare to the peace and joy that is to come, as Paul said. And I know they experienced that. I feel it in my heart that they both experienced that and so many others that have trusted in Him, had that childlike faith and said, Lord, I trust you, I'll go with you. For you alone, our God, won't you give Him your life today? The world's going to be the world, troubles will come. But if you'll give it to Him, you know that you're going home. It's a beautiful thing to go home to a perfect heaven. Would you pray with me today and give your life to Him or give your life back to Him if it's 
If it's something that you know that you've slipped off the path and you've backslid and all that, He still loves you. Just as Israel, He was always reaching His hand out. Always trying to get Him to come. Would you come today? Would you give your life to Him? Pray this prayer with me. <coughs> Dear Lord, I'm a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I ask you to come into my life and to lead me in all ways. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Please be my Lord in all ways. Let me walk for you. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Trust him with everything, brothers and sisters. If you've prayed that prayer, if you've given your life to him or given it back to him, he'll find you a Bible-believing church. Be baptized. You know, and go forth with him. Get in your word. Get in your word and learn of him and all that. Feel free to come watch these videos. We do this weekly message, then we do the five minutes with God. We do a little thing called breadcrumbs. It's like a minute long thing on Instagram and on Facebook also. And feel free to check out 5minuteswithgodvideo.com. My name's Travis Williams. You can message me. I'll be glad to pray with you or encourage you in whatever way I can. But I tell you, go with him today. Go with him. Let's return to childhood and trust in him. David with those five smooth stones. He knew it wasn't about the stones, but about the God that was above him. That his God could direct those stones exactly where they needed to go, and he surely did. So many different things that come up in your life, in my life, in all the lives. If they're given over to him. And we have that childlike trust that, that our Father is able to fix this. Our Father can take care of this. Our Father knows best. For He does. For He can. Give Him this soul, you know. And our Father knows where this soul can go. He can put our soul in a place where we'll be at peace. What a blessing. Let us go forth for Him like never before. And let us trust Him like never before. For he's worthy to be trusted. And you can trust him and not have to worry that you trusted the wrong one. In the world sometimes, you might trust this one or that one. And you put your trust in the wrong one. Not with God. Not with God. You'll never regret trusting in him. You'll never regret following him. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you. Father, help us to be children, Lord, more and more. Give us that childlike faith, Lord, that childlike trust that we'll trust you unconditionally, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done, Lord, and all that you will do in our lives. We give you all our problems, all our things going on, Lord, all the Goliaths, Lord, and all the lives. We give them to you, knowing that you're able, Lord, knowing that it's not us, but it's you. We just ask you, Lord, to overcome in our lives. Lord, help us to overcome through you, Lord. All those things that come against us, Lord. We give it all to you, Lord. And we thank you for all that you're able to do. And we pray for so many that don't know you, Lord, that they would come to know you. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. May God bless you.